It's not long now until Prehistoric Kingdom is released in early access, coming in April this year, so just roughly a month away and the anticipation is very high. My name is Heiser and thank you for coming by. Now PK is up there with being one of the most enjoyable games that I've played so far this year. I've really enjoyed the alpha that was released at the beginning and also the beta which improved along the alpha which was really really good. But the question is now, early access with it being around the corner, what are we going to expect in the game? So, let's start with dinosaurs. So we know upon release there will be 22 dinosaurs available in the game on early access. We know as well that each of these dinosaurs has skin variations depending on their location and where they are found on the map. So popping up on your screen now is a list of the dinosaurs that are currently in the game and a list of dinosaurs that will be available in the game on early access. Feel free to pause the video here to take a closer look at the dinosaurs. Now for example about the coats within the game, we'll take a look at the Pachyrhinosaurus. You can see here on the left hand side it has a coat. I call it a coat, it's more like a fur, but it could be like feather-like as well. But also you can see on the right hand side that you have one without it, and you can see the variation differences. What you'll also get is difference in height, which will be based on gender and location. So moving on, but staying with dinosaurs, we're going to have a look at the animal welfare. So currently in the beta, we know that animals don't have any welfare at the moment, so we know that it's going to be implemented because on the on-screen menus that you can see in the game, it is available. It's also been mentioned on the devlogs on their website and on the Trello development page. So you're going to need to take care of its health, which includes its immunity and its vital, which then leads me on to thinking that this is going to implement staff, which I will talk about later on. Now along with its health and vitals, this is going to lead to you taking care of its diet, such as its hunger and thirst. It has a social group as well, so you're going to need to maintain that. And also you can see in the menu within the game that you will be giving a pack leader or an alpha, similar to like how wolves operate in the field. You're also going to have to take care of the habitat size as this will determine how many dinosaurs you can have inside one. You're also going to have available to you is like enrichment items, such as foraging items and placeables, all those to keep your dinosaurs stimulated. You'll be able to place modular pieces which will allow the animals to climb up onto, so you can make things like ramps, you can make ramps leading to a glass ceiling so they can climb over and the guests go underneath so it's really really good that these dinosaurs can transverse not just on land but on modular pieces moving on now we're going to take a look at the guest welfare now in my opinion humans need just as much maintenance as the animals themselves are in the park so it's only right that we take care of us tiny humans now with this you're going to need to look after their hunger their needs their bathrooms shopping items etc entertainment as well you're going to have to educate them, you're going to have to show them signs, maybe some posters, maybe some adverts as well. Now currently in the game, in beta access at the moment, there is nothing really for entertainment purposes for the guests. At the moment they walk in, they just transverse around. Sometimes they climb some rocks, which I'm thinking as well, they're going to improve on the pathfinding. But I'm thinking as well, long term down the line, you're going to be looking at entertainment things. So you could be talking such as Vista Point, trains, something they can move around in, like a monorail, maybe a boat as well. But again, these are all things that I feel could be developed in early access in the long term. Now moving on, we're going to have a look at the park management. Now animal welfare and guest welfare isn't going to be free, so managing it will be very important. Everything I mentioned beforehand about the dinosaurs, the habitats, building, modular pieces, it's all going to cost money and it's going to be down to you to manage it. Your staff are going to cost money, your structures, your infrastructure, your power, all those things are going to cost you. But luckily you will have a management tab which will allow you to overview this and see your ingoings and outgoings and you'll also be able to do things such as looking at your excavation sites of your dinosaurs, you'll have everything available for you to stay on top of your park. You're also going to have loan options, so if you are running a bit short on cash, you can take out a loan. There are several options available in beta at the moment, but I think these will be tweaked in the game for later on. So the next topic we're going to talk about now is modular building. This is by far my most favourite part of the game, and if you don't know why, here's a few clips on why I think it is. Oh wow, you can resize this. So did I tell you that you can resize? I absolutely love this feature. So yeah, you get the idea, right? So you can resize objects in the game. I say it again. So you can have anything from a beam, a wall, a doorway, anything you can think of that's a part of a modular structure. You can resize it and you can make it fit and you can make it to anything you want. I say anything you want because I've used things like air conditioning units as like maybe buzzers on the wall, little sign in passwords. I've used all different types of structures and shrunk them down to make them look completely different to what they are. But they work really good for detailing as well. I've managed to make like bookshelves, I've made keyboards, I've made computers. It's really, really good. You're going to have available to you as well, such as props, so you can make things like guttering around your buildings because we absolutely love doing that, don't we? We love making guttering. What are you talking about? You can do things like adding wheelbarrows, hoses, all those sort of things, and you can just really add nice detail into your park. It doesn't just stop there, though. You've got things such as statues, fossils, murals, wall signs, alphabetical letters and numbers, customizable soil. You've got 
all these sort of things, plant pots, it's endless. You've even got buckets as well. I mean, I use buckets for like planters and I use them for like tiny cups as well because you can resize them. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop talking about that now, but you are going to love it. Moving on to the next section, we're going to talk about biomes. Now you're going to have available to you different types of starting maps. So you can have, for instance, wetlands, scrublands, maybe even desert. But what you're going to have as well, you're going to have the option to paint these so you can change the biomes within the area of your map. So say you pick a tropical map but you want to maybe design a desert area for it, you can do that in the game. You can paint the whole area, you can use the foilage. You're not restricted by the map that you choose. Now, currently in the game we have available to us is the tropical, the wetland, the scrubland, the temperament, the coastal and boral, but also to be added into the game will be desert and grassland as it's already seen in the menu, but not available yet. So kind of sticking with the same thing at the moment, we're gonna have a look at the landscaping now. Now this is something I also enjoyed using quite a lot in the game. You've got the options to obviously lower raised terrain, you can erode it, you can kind of make things look a little bit different. It's, it's really nice touch, you can level things out, but what you can do, you can make things like structural mountains and it works really, really well. So this is being accompanied by the painting as well. So you can make these mountains with different textures. You can make it look like rocks. You can also like change the texture so you can paint it and make it look like mountains. So instead of like placing loads of rocks down, like you, you, can, you can place like a thousand rocks down if you wanted to, um, to reduce lag, you can just change the terrain, paint it how you want, and you can make some really nice mountain views. You're also going to have water types, so at your disposal you're going to be able to place calm, rough, muddy water. You're going to change the depth of it, you're going to change the size of it. You can just brush it on and make these really nice little rivers or large lakes. Anything that you kind of want to do is going to be available for you to do in the game. So now lastly, I'm going to talk about pathfinding in the game and the staff. Now I wasn't too sure whether to mention this or not because so far in the game the pathfinding has been absolutely brilliant. You can build like massive plazas, the pathfinding and the connections. Going down on different terrains is very good. There's not very many limitations like for when you're placing them. And it really does make it very nice and refreshing to be able to do this in the game without any sort of obstacles. Also linking onto the pathing that the guests will can tend to walk anywhere you place something which is kind of at a certain degree or an angle. So we, there were some tests a little while back in the beta and alpha where you could try to build the highest ramp possible and the guests would walk to it and they did. So you can build these ramps so they don't have to just walk onto paths so they can walk onto the modular structures, pieces, as long as you allow them easy access to it they'll be able to walk onto it now with staffing i have seen it mentioned that they will be implemented into the game so you're going to have them available to look after your habitats cater to your guests probably working in shops as well so it's a very important thing and also i think it adds a bit of realism to the game as well so you see your staff walking around doing their job working taking care of the animals it's a really nice touch to bring your park to life now it's very likely that I may have missed a few things out in this video but I tried to cover the most aspects of the game so you know what to expect when you come to play it. Um, I will put their website down below in the link which you can find all their devlogs. They do also have a Discord which I will leave a link to down below as well. I don't use it myself personally just because I'm a bit of a social um, social freak. I don't tend to like go on social media as much as I like to or should do really. Um, but you can go down there and can check it out yourself and you can find some more information as well. And hopefully come early access release that all you guys have been anticipating this game. I hope I hope you really do enjoy it. I'm very, very confident that you will. And also I just want to say thank you for stopping by watching the video as well. Thank you so much. Doing this is really, really hard for me. I have a massive fear of talking on the mic. I can't stand my own voice when I have to listen to it back and edit it. It drives me up the mental wall. So yeah, I really appreciate your support here, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by and listening and watching as well. Thanks again. See ya. Bye-bye.